What's up guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, let's talk about how one would go from zero, no knowledge of cloud computing, no experience, no courses, no degree, to becoming a cloud engineer. Looking at this from the perspective of someone with no experience to getting their first role as a cloud engineer. In this video, I'm gonna be going through my recommended steps to achieving this. And hopefully these steps will be able to help you if this is the path you're on. If you're trying to become a cloud engineer, I've been a cloud engineer for the past two years now, and I've recently gone through that process of going through independent learning, going through a long job search, and finally getting my first cloud engineer role. And in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through doing the same. And I really hope that some of the tips in this video will actually help some people to get their first roles as cloud engineers. Please enjoy this video. So let's get started. Step one will be, of course, to do your research on cloud. Since we're doing zero to cloud engineer, this will be someone who has no experience and no understanding of cloud. And the first step is to go and research cloud. Type it into Google, type it into YouTube. What is cloud computing? What is a cloud engineer? What is a cloud solutions architect? What is the cloud? There are some really good videos on YouTube that explain this really well, and I'm gonna be putting some links to them in the description of this video, so that if you're going on this path, you can go to these links and find out a lot more about cloud, and this will be your first step of researching the cloud done. The second step is to look at cloud engineer job descriptions on LinkedIn or on Google or on any job board that you decide. But when you look through these job descriptions, you'll be able to see what the role actually looks like, what it entails and what they actually do. One of the big things about looking at job descriptions, which is really, really helpful, is that when you look at the job description of a cloud engineer, you're able to see the skills which are required from companies which are looking for cloud engineers. Some of the typical skills are things like an understanding of one of the cloud providers like Microsoft Azure, AWS, or Google Cloud. Another common requirement is an understanding of Linux. Another one might be the use of PowerShell or Terraform. And others might be a good understanding of operating systems like Windows. But don't look through these job descriptions and say, oh, I don't have what is required, and so I can never be a cloud engineer. Take a note of some of these things, go after learning those skills and building your knowledge in these areas as you now know what is required to become a cloud engineer. Now the third step is to choose the CSP and the CSP stands for cloud service provider. So typically it's either Microsoft Azure, AWS or Google Cloud Platform. There are other cloud platforms out there but these are the ones that you should be looking at. They're the most popular and whichever of these cloud providers you go after, there are loads of jobs within each of them. And if you're struggling trying to figure out which one to go for, I have a video here which explains why I chose Microsoft Azure and I'm not pushing anyone to choose Microsoft Azure, but I just explain why I chose the cloud provider I chose in this video and maybe it will help you to make your decision. If you're going for AWS, that's great. If you're going for Microsoft Azure, that's great. If you're going for Google Cloud, that's also great. Let the decision be your own. Now, number four on this list is to get your foundational certification. This is the basic certification which gives you that foundation and fundamental understanding of the cloud provider you're going after. So now that you've chosen either Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud or AWS, it's now time to get the foundational certification for that cloud. And if it's Microsoft Azure, that's gonna be the AZ900. If it's AWS, that's gonna be the AWS Cloud Practitioner. And Google has their own as well, which I've just forgotten. These fundamental cloud certifications are typically not so difficult. The research you've already done, you should be able to get this certification within two to three weeks. The certifications typically cost about 80 to 100 pounds or 90 to 110 dollars. So they are quite expensive, but there are some programs out there which allow you to take these for free. So do look out for these programs. If you don't wanna pay that money, go after looking for one of these free vouchers so you can go and take one of these fundamental exams. There's loads and loads of free courses online for this exam, so I wouldn't advise anyone paying for a fundamentals course when you can get one of the free courses online very easily, which are really, really good. There's loads on YouTube, so just type in the name of the course and you should find them on YouTube. Now, step five, once you've got that foundational certification, it's time to start your first project. Cloud projects are super important and beginner cloud projects can really put you in a good place. 
because now that you've got a bit of the theoretical knowledge from the certification, it's time to get some hands-on work done. There are loads of videos on YouTube which can help you to start your cloud projects. I'm gonna put some of them up now and I'll be putting them in the description also. It's really important to do projects as if you don't have hands-on experience, projects can be a substitute for that hands-on experience. Although you haven't worked for a company and applied these things at an actual job, you've done these things in your spare time and your independent learning. And you can prove this to an employer that's gonna hire you in future. When you put projects on your CV, it's almost as if you've actually done the work for a company because truly you've done it for yourself. Projects show a genuine interest and understanding of something and they show that you've gone out of your way to actually practically try these things out in your spare time. Step six, now that you've done one or two cloud projects and are continuing to look for more cloud projects, it's time to go after the associate certification. Typically, if you're doing Azure, the next certification that people usually go for is the AZ-104. And I have loads of videos on the AZ-104 on this channel. The AZ-104 is the Azure Administrator Certification and it's a really good second certification to go for after you've got the fundamentals. And if you're doing AWS, the typical second one to go for is the AWS Solutions Architect Certification. This moves away from sort of the theoretical stuff that's covered in the Cloud Practitioner and goes more in deep on what you actually do as someone working in AWS. It gives you a better understanding of the services and resources within AWS and is a lot more of a hands-on certification and much more recognized by employers. Associate certifications are obviously a lot more difficult than fundamental certifications, but with the foundations that you have and the projects that you've done, you should have a good understanding going into the next certification. Now, step seven. Remember the job descriptions you looked at in step two? Now it's time to put those skills to work. Those skills that you saw on those job descriptions that said either Linux or learn PowerShell or learn a certain programming language, it's time to start learning those skills that you saw on the job descriptions. If these skills are on job descriptions, it means they are valuable, not just to that company, but if they're on the job descriptions of one company, there's gonna be loads of other companies which are looking for these skills also. So go on YouTube, find a course that covers this skill and start learning this skill. If it's PowerShell, there's stuff on PowerShell. If it's about OSs, there's stuff on OSs. Just go and learn a lot about this thing that's been mentioned in the job description and make sure you cover this really well. Number eight, now it's time to search for your first cloud job. Now, when looking for a cloud job, you really wanna be looking for junior and entry level roles. They can definitely sometimes be hard to find, but when you have those projects, and you have that stuff, you don't just have to look for entry level roles, but you can look for roles which require one year or two years sometimes, and they might give you that chance. If you've been going for a few months and you're still struggling to find a cloud job, or perhaps there's a lack of cloud roles in the area which you are, then do consider looking at other roles that involve cloud engineering, such as roles like IT support that involves use of Azure, or DevOps roles that involves the use of AWS. But some of these roles can actually give you a stepping stone and give you a little bit of hands-on experience working with Azure, working with cloud, for you to then go and get your cloud role later on. And I have one more bonus step, which I'm gonna mention, which is look into a specific role and go after specific skills. So as you know, cloud engineering is really broad and there's loads of different areas within cloud engineering. I have a video on the top five cloud computing jobs, which is top five based on my personal opinion. And there's quite a few different roles. So going after one of these roles specifically allows you to streamline your skills to making sure that you're fit for that specific role. Or it could be a cloud support engineer or getting your skills ready for a cloud security engineer role or even a cloud administrator role. Looking very specifically into one role can really help you to get the skills for that specific role really quickly and be the right candidate for that job. That's all the tips I have for you guys today. I hope this video has been really helpful and I hope those watching are able to apply these skills and get that job. If you manage to finally get a cloud engineering role, do let me know in the comment section and let me know if this video has been really helpful. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment in the comment section, like and subscribe, follow me on LinkedIn and Instagram, and I'll see you guys in the next video.